Hello, welcome to another beautiful morning. This is a light for the nation. It's a daily devotional program that is brought to you by the Catholic Church. My name is Tony Abba. Today, Reverend Father Silvanus Ame is asking us if we really know what God said. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for the opportunity to share your word this day. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, you will open up our hearts to hear your holy word, to accept it, and to live by it through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, I welcome you to today's reflection on a light for the nation. And today we shall reflect on the subject, did God really say did God really say? And we shall take our text from Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1. And there the Bible says, Now the snake was the most subtle of all the wild animals that Yahweh God had made. It asked the woman, Did God really say you were not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the snake, We may eat the fruit of the trees in the garden. But the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, You must not eat it, nor touch it, under pain of death. Then the snake said to the woman, No, you will not die. God knows in fact that the day you eat it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like gods, knowing good from evil. That's Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 5. Did God really say? You see, when the devil came to tempt the woman, the first thing he did was to attack her faith in God and to make her question God's integrity, question God's sincerity towards she and her husband. Did God really say? Why would God say? Why would God ask you not to do such a thing? when he knows that it can bring you some benefits instantly. And then the Bible says that the woman afterwards saw that the fruit was good to the eyes and she took it and she ate. The rest of the story we know. Now, dear brothers and sisters, this is what the devil does when he wants to bring us down, when he wants to tempt us to do something evil. He questions our faith in God and he makes us to also question God's sincerity towards us. Why would God ask me not to steal? Why would God say we should not fornicate? Why would God say we should not commit adultery? Why would God say we should not lie? Did God really say? That's the question. But in asking that question, the devil was pointing attention to faith in God and shaking their faith in God. So oftentimes, this is what will happen to us when we are tempted to do something evil. Did God really say we should not cheat when we can actually cheat and have extra money in our accounts? Did God really say we should not tell a lie when we can tell a lie and escape some punishment? Did God really say we should not commit fornication when we can and enjoy some pleasurable moments? Did God really say we should be faithful to our spouses when we can commit adultery and nobody will know about it? Why should we stick to one partner for the rest of life when there are options? Did God really say? My dear brother, my dear sister, whenever that question begins to pop up in your mind, why should I do this and not do that? Why should I live up to a, uh, why should I live a life of virtue when I can choose a life of vice? Know that the devil is around somewhere and he's trying to speak rubbish into your head. But one thing that we must never forget is that there is a consequence for all of the evils that we do. There is a consequence for the sins that we commit. And then, even as we read in our text of scripture, God said to the man and the woman, if you do this, you do it under pain of death. It wasn't physical death anyway, but the relationship that they had with God was affected. And the rest of the story, like I said earlier, we know. So dear friends, let us always keep faith in God. Whatever God has said we should do is for our good. Whatever God has said we should avoid is also for our good. But if we choose to listen to the devil and question our faith in God, question God's sincerity towards us, and we choose to commit a sin, 
the devil will come back and laugh at us later. You know, before a sin, the devil cheers us up. He encourages us. But after a sin, he stands somewhere and he mocks at us. And that's why your conscience pricks you. That's why my conscience pricks me whenever we commit a sin. That's the devil laughing at us behind the sin. Because he has tricked us and we have fallen for his trick. So dear friends, I say to you, please do not fall for that trick of the devil. Do not let the devil push you to the point where you begin to doubt God, where you begin to question all of the good that God says we should do, and also begin to see an attraction in all of the evils that God has said we should avoid. Do not give the devil his opportunity. And I pray that God will give us always the courage to resist the temptations of the devil. And may God bless his word in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for blessing us with your word. We thank you for speaking to our hearts. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that you help us by your grace to always do the right thing. Help us, O oh God, to keep faith in you at all times through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Reverend Father Silvanus Ame is of the Catholic Archdiocese of Abuja, guiding us in today's reflections. I believe you have learned how to really discern the voice of God when you hear one. But if you have questions or suggestions you wish to share with us, please don't forget to send us a short message on the numbers displayed on your screen or send us an email at ctvnigeria at yahoo.com. We always love to get your feedback on our Facebook page. Post us a comment. Let's interact and understand how this program has been blessing you. Bye for now and have a wonderful day. When I think about how far you brought me When I look around and see your goodness around me when I think of all the things you've done for me And all I can say, Lord, is thanks When I think about how far you brought me When I look around and see your goodness around me when I think of all the things you've done for me And all I can say, Lord, is thanks Lord, I lift my voice to say Everything in me says With every breath I'm, I'm so, so grateful Lord, I'm so grateful Lord, I lift my voice to say Through the shadows and dark